ahead of the sixth anniversary of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370's disappearance, there is a new search for answers. This week on Sky News, we investigate the biggest aviation mystery in history and reveal exactly what the key players knew at the time. Senior journalist at The Australian, Ian Higgins, has spent years investigating the case. I'd argue that not many people know much more about the MH370 case than he does. He's written a book about it. It's called The Hunt for MH370. It's a fantastic book too. Ian Higgins joins us now. Uh, Ian, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Um, so we've been running... Uh, some snippets of, uh, of our documentary which, which airs tonight and tomorrow night. Tony Abbott basically saying that in his discussions with the, the very top levels of the Malaysian government that they said to him within about a week that it was murder-suicide by the pilot, mass murder-suicide by the pilot. How significant is that? I think it's very significant because uh, during the start of the search in 2014, various uh, government officials and the Australian Transport Safety Bureau downplayed or sort of cast aside the possibility of pilot hijack murder-suicide and it's quite clear from what Mr. Abbott tells us that right from the start the Malaysians had mm. concluded that this is exactly what happened. So why is there some conflicting views still because you know, we've both read the Malaysian Airlines final report that came out in 2018 and they still they still refuse to point the finger at the pilot so why have you still got the Malaysians denying it was the pilot and it was mass murder. And then you've got our Prime Minister who, who says that it was. Well, I think you have to realise that this is a big embarrassment for the Malaysian government. Uh, the idea that a pilot uh, of mm. the national-owned airline would take 238 people to their deaths would be a big loss of face mm. for, uh, for Malaysia. So it's not the conclusion that they would like to have out there publicly. Mm. Uh, just this week you've broken the story uh, that Queensland maybe looking to, to open up an inquest or, or, or get an inquest going. Can you tell us a bit about that and, and potential for success here and what it might mean? Well, this is a big new development and it could be quite significant indeed. Basically, uh, some pilots and a barrister who believe that, in fact, the, the, the pilot did take the plane to its uh, end, they've asked the Queensland Attorney General, that's Yvette Dath, to hold order a coronial inquest, uh, which would be, uh, you know, like any other inquest, mm. but in open court, because there are four Queenslanders on the flight, and the, it has to been determined by Ms. By Ms. Dath's office that she does, in fact, have the power to order the state coroner to launch an inquest, and that would see a whole lot of information mm. come out in open court. There'd be subpoenas for the Australian Transport Safety Bureau, I imagine, and their officers and material. And mm. it'd, be, it'd be quite traumatic, I think, for the families. And I think basically it's going to be up to the families effectively to decide whether or not they want to ask for the inquest. So more, more than anything, it would be about putting the ATSB on the stand rather than, you know, getting perhaps more compensation for, for victims, family members of victims, because as I understand, they've already been paid out. That's right. It, this would be about getting to the truth of what happened to MH370 and the 239 people on that flight. And I, th I think, as I say, what Ms. Dath has said is that she wants the pilots to present the new evidence, some of which is in the show that mm. is running tonight and tomorrow night. And then she will consider that evidence and decide. But as I say, I think uh, it's going to be up to the families. I know they are considering whether to call on Ms. Dath to order the state coroner to mount the inquest. There is um, a confession of sorts. Uh, well, there is a confession on, on our documentary. We've got Warren Truss on the show who, who admits uh, that uh, the ATSB and the government were looking in the wrong area. There has been a, a push in the last few days too to, to resume the search. Uh, more than likely it will probably happen in the private sector uh, rather than having the government foot the bill. Is there headway there? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you see real movement and is the revelations uh, that, that we're putting forth enough to, to kind of drive that interest and get it going? I think it, there'll be more momentum towards a new search. It still has a way to go. Basically what's happening, as I see it, is that um, Ocean Infinity, which is the uh, international, well, Houston-based company that mounted the last mm. unsuccessful search, uh, they clearly want to have another go. They say they want to have another go. The Malaysian government says it's open to uh, another deal in which they'll pay Ocean Infinity if they find the, the plane. 
but they say they need concrete new evidence as to where it might be. So I think what's happening is that Ocean Infinity is talking again with experts to try to come up with a portfolio of evidence to present to the Malaysian government to get them to agree to a new search. All right, Ian Higgins, uh, author of uh, The Hunt for MH370, as a contributing producer on our, on our documentary tonight as well. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. There's going to be a lot to come on this story. And for more on Ian Higgins' research, you can grab a copy of his book, The Hunt for MH370. So he spent years investigating the mystery. And uh, as I mentioned, not too many people know more about the, that plane and the mystery than he does. And please stay tuned to Sky News for our explosive two-part documentary, MH370, The Untold Story. Part one will uncover what... Authorities believed was the real reason behind the aviation mystery and that begins tonight 8pm right here on Sky News part 2 tomorrow night 8pm.